So right now, I'll be sharing with you something that is quite close to my heart and why I am very much excited with this ministry. And as I've shared to you last time, last, I was supposed to say last, I was about to say last week. It was not last week. It was just a couple of days ago. Yeah, a couple of days ago, I was talking about, I was not even excited about prayer, about prayer ministry, because all the while I thought that prayer was a waste of time. Isn't that sad? And the Lord really has, has to show me, has to show me that without Him, I can do nothing. Can you say amen to that, friends? And by the way, if you want to say amen, I know you could not, you could not speak up right now. You are all muted. But if you want to say amen, just lift up your fingers. Okay, can we do that exercise? Amen? Okay, even the baby is, uh, is doing some thumbs up there. So, so praise God. So friends, so tonight, I'll be sharing with you the biggest reason why we have to be excited about prayer ministry. And this is one thing I realized, friends, because all the while I thought that prayer ministry is just for, is just for the ladies. How many, how many men have you been have you witnessed, have you seen, like being a prayer leader? Seldom. And all the while I thought that only old people are, are the ones who should be leading out because all the while I saw that it was just like women, old people. And I did not, I did not really imagine that I'll be in this ministry. And friends, the moment I dove into this, I'll never look back. It has been an amazing, amazing journey. It has been an amazing privilege and opportunity to be leading God's people on their knees. And this is one thing that not most people want to talk about. But you know what, friends? Every time we are in a difficult situation, this is one thing that we run to. Am I right? When we are in a hopeless situation, we bend our knees. We call out in the name of God. But this is one thing as well that I realize that God desires to be with us, not just on desperate times, but also on the best times of our lives. So I'd like to talk about something right now. It says here, this is found in Signs of the Times. By the way, friends, this, uh, this materials, I'll be sharing it with, uh, with the GYC staff. So you could, you could somehow... Ask them if you want, if you want a uh, this materials to be shared with you through your email. So it says here, throughout all the churches, there is one subject of vital importance that has been neglected. Can you guess what this is? Throughout all churches, there is one, there is one subject of vital importance. When you say vital, it's very, it it pertains to life. It's connected to, to the growth or life of a ministry, an individual life, or a church. So this vital thing has been neglected. You know what that is? Can anyone guess? <laughs> I could just see smiling faces. Oh, I, I, could, I could see someone mouthing prayer. Actually, it's connected to prayer. Oh, yes, I, I saw someone writing prayer. So it says here, we have failed to make the Holy Spirit the theme of our thought and instruction. Did you get this? So this is one very important topic, very important aspect of our spiritual life, of our ministry, that we somehow has not focused our attention on. Listen to this thought, friends. When I, when I read this, it really blew my mind. Listen to this, friends. In giving the Holy Spirit it was impossible for God to give more. Did you hear this? In giving the Holy Spirit, it was impossible for God to give more. This is one thing that, that really somehow, literally, it's just like, it just overwhelmed me. It's just like when God gave the Holy Spirit, He emptied heaven's bank account. <laughs> Did you get that? That was, that was already the best. And listen, friends, to this gift, nothing could be added. And by it, all needs are met. The Holy Spirit is the vital presence of God. Wow. Can you say wow with me, friends? 
I just want to say your mouth open. Wow. This is crazy, friends. This is crazy. The Holy Spirit is the vital presence of God. So just imagine, friends, if we continually have the Holy Spirit with us, we have God with us. Can you say amen to that? I like that wow. It's a very prolonged wow. Okay. <laughs> Listen to this, friends. And it says here, and if appreciated, will call forth praise and thanksgiving and will ever be springing up unto everlasting life. This is crazy, friends. If you want a life of continual praise and thanksgiving, you should be focusing much on this subject. You should have the continual presence of the Holy Spirit. Friends, listen to this. Yet how few appreciate this gift, so costly, yet so free to all who will accept it. When faith takes hold of the blessing, there comes rich spiritual good. But too often, the blessing is not appreciated. We need an enlarged conception in order to comprehend its value. Friends, is this right? We need an enlarged conception in order to what? To comprehend the value of this gift. And by the way, that's from Science of the Times, August 7, 1901. And also here from Review and Herald, it says here, the work of the Holy Spirit is immeasurably great. Ha! We do not even talk about this. Friends, if the work of the Holy Spirit is immeasurably great, then we should, we should be focusing on this. Would you agree, friends? Can you say amen to that? Friends, I want to see your thumbs up. Yeah. Okay. So listen to this, friends. Listen to this. From this source, that power and efficiency come to the worker for God. So if you are working for the Lord, my dear friends, you have to know about this power. You need to be charged. It's like your cell phone without Without the power, without the power, without being charged, you'll not be able to function. Without the power bank, you'll not be able to function, friends. So, and, and even Jesus here said in John 16, verse 7, he said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the comforter, or the Holy Spirit will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Friends, Jesus even said that it is an advantage for us to receive the Holy Spirit. And multiple quotes here just talks about the importance of the Holy Spirit in the ministry. Like testimonies for the church. God's work is to be carried forward with power. We need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What was the description? Our work needs to be carried forward with what? With power, friends, we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, and this has been repeated so many times. I'll just give you that one example because I don't want to go on with on and on and on. You might be bored, but friends, do not be bored by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is what we need. And when you look at it, let us be honest among ourselves. Has our work in, in your neck of the woods or in your in your area of the world, has the work been moving forward with power? Not much, isn't it? Even in our, in our area, even though we have a lot of Adventists here, still there's, there's power that's, lack, that's lacking. And friends, and this quote here from A.W. Tozer somehow gave this, this little bit of a picture of the reality that we are in right now. Listen to this. If God were to take the Holy Spirit of our midst today, again, let me read that. If God were to take the Holy Spirit out of our midst today, about 95% of what we are doing in our church would go on and we would not even know the difference. Did you hear that? <laughs> it's a shame, isn't it? 95% of what we are doing would still go on if the Holy Spirit was removed. You know what's the reason? You know why? Because we have been so used to function or to work without the power of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that crazy? Yes, friends. Mercy. Have mercy, my dear friends. 
it is crazy. 95% of what we're doing would go on and we would not even know the difference. But listen to this next line. Yet if God would have taken the Holy Spirit out of the midst of the first Christian community, about 95% of what they are doing would have ceased immediately. Did you get that? Friends, it would have ceased immediately. Why? Because they are so dependent on the leading and the power of the Holy Spirit. What's the difference with us now? Friends, we are living in the most unfortunate age. We are in an age full of solutions. Did you get that? We are in an age, in an age full of resources, my dear friends. And that's the reason why we do not depend on the Holy Spirit the way we should. We do not depend on God the way we should. We depend upon a, a lot of resources, a lot of talents, a lot of ideas, a lot of methods, but not really on the power that was promised to us. Would you agree, friends? And I want you to say amen. Just agree, just nod. <laughs> and listen to this. Listen to this beautiful reminder for us in John 15, verse 5. John 15, verse 5 says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. And this is the powerful line here. For without me, ye can do everything. I, I, love, I love our sisters. Sidewise, side, sideways, not, uh-uh, uh-uh. That's, that's the wrong version, Jen. Yes. Thank you, Karen. For without me, you can do what? Nothing. And this is one thing, friends. This is one thing that we have, we have to remember. We just have to take God's word seriously. That's what we have talked last time. If we believe that without God, we are nothing, we should be more dependent upon him than dependent upon people, upon resources, upon ideas, upon anything else. Can you say amen to that, friends? If we take him at his word, we, have, we really have to depend upon him. Even Christ himself said in John, 15, in John 5 verse 3, I can of mine own self do nothing. Did you get this? This is crazy. This is Jesus, the Son of God. This is Jesus, the Creator God, even admitted, I can of mine own self do nothing. So friends, this is one beautiful example that we need to follow. That we do not need to be, to be working independently from God. God desires us to be so dependent on Him that it will be a reality for us that without Him, we are what? We are nothing. Friends, I'd like to show you this, this graph. Before, before my sister Lavelle shows you this graph, I'd like to share this, this beautiful experience I've had last year. We had this OCI conference. OCI is Outpost Centers International. This is also part of, this is one ministry as well. It is under ASI. And OCI is just like a little ASI of its own. It's, uh, it has this ministry all over the world that is under it. And, and the reports every night is just so inspiring. What's happening in uh, in South America, what's happening in Europe, what's happening in Asia. They're reporting every night and every night I'm thinking, wow, this is awesome. God is coming so soon. The world is being rich, reached by, by the message. And then on Friday night, someone from, from Adventist Frontier Missions gave this report. And this report, my heart, my heart, I, I'll, I'll tell you what happened to my heart after his report. So, my sister Lovell will show us this, this, uh, this graph here. And while he was reporting, he presented this graph. And he said, in this graph, uh, he, he said, the blue one, the blue, the blue uh, element in the graph, this is the, the population of the world. And the green, and he said, the green part is the population of the church. So you'll see, you'll see somehow, in comparison, the population of the church compared to the population of the world. Okay. And friends, can you see the graph right now? Can you see the blue? Can you see the green? 
And this is the thing, all the while I thought that he was colorblind because all, all I saw was blue. I have not seen the green. And then he, he somehow presented this next slide. Sister Lavelle, can you show them the next slide? It's my mind was blown when I saw. Now can you see the green, friends? Can you see the green? You could, you could pinch your phone there to zoom it. I I love to see Joy's reaction. Her mouth just dropped wide open. Friends, can you see the green now? Diana, can you see the green now? <laughs> Barely, huh? It's so, so tiny, friends. I have to zoom it. I really have to zoom it. That's why I asked I asked for this graph because it, it really gave me a short depression, friends. Yes. Yes, Alexia, it was shocking. I was quite depressed that night. I was quite depressed. All the while, I thought that, that the whole world has been reached and Christ is coming soon. But friends, that graph brought me to reality of how small our accomplishments were. Of how small our accomplishments were. And this is one thing I realized, friends. Of all the things that we have been doing for the past hundred years plus, this is what we have reached. And you know the number? When it was, when it was, when I got the number from him, he did not tell me about the percentage. Did you know? It's not even 1%, friends. It's not even 1%. It's not even one half of 1%. And get this. It's not even one third of 1%. You know what's the number? It's 0.29. It's 0.29. Actually, that was the highest. It drops once in a while, 0.27. It's, it's quite depressing. Again, I'm sorry to start this message with a depressing note, but we have to know our condition, friends. We have to know our condition so that we will know what we need. Now, this is one thing that I'd like to bring your minds into. I want to bring your minds into. This is what happens when we do not rely on the power of the Holy Spirit. Friends, this is what happens. God says, without me, he can do nothing. Let me continue on, friends. Let me continue on. It gets, it gets brighter, I promise. I promise. There is this beautiful promise, friends. There's this beautiful promise in Testimonies to the Ministers, page 174, paragraph 2. It says here, oh, I, I heard, I hear this, uh, I, I saw that there's, uh, what's this, there's, there's comment here that it's only the population of our church. Yes, friends, but do you know how many billions are still not reached? It will blow your mind. Look it up, friends, look it up. How many billions have not known the name Jesus? There are still billions, there are still languages that have not heard the word Jesus. So, when we look at reality, friends, we will know for a fact, we will know for a fact that we have not really been spreading this gospel that God wants us to share. So testimonies to the ministers, page 174, it says here, this promised blessing, what this promised blessing is, this is the blessing of the Holy Spirit. Friends, listen, if claimed by faith would bring all other blessings in its train. Wow, did you hear that? If this promised blessing, if claimed by faith, will bring all other blessings in its train. Friends, let us be real here. How much of your time do you spend in asking for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Now, let us ask ourselves, how much of the church time is being spent on asking for the power of the Holy Spirit? When we come together in church boards, when we come together in meetings, how much time do we spend in asking for the leading of the Holy Spirit? You see, it's like that green picture there. It's like the, the proportion of that green in the graph. That's why, that's how much we have seen God's power. Friends, 
if claimed by faith will bring all other blessings in its train. And get this, get the last part of that coat. And it is to be given liberally to the people of God. Can you say wow again, friends? It is to be given liberally to the people of God. So if the promise is liberal blessings, if we are not receiving this liberally, the fault is not with God. The fault is with us. Do you believe that, friends? The fault is not with God. The fault is with us. Because if God says so, it will be so. If God says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. So friends, this is the problem with us as a church, as a people, as this generation. We have been leaning on so many other solutions, but not on the solution that God has promised. God has promised this liberally to us. So friends, there was one story that, uh, that I heard. I'm working with this ministry right now called ASAP. ASAP stands for Advocates for the Southeast Asians and the Persecuted. The ministry is somehow uh, ministering to, to the 1040 window for those uh, close countries. So I will not mention what, what country this, this is or this was. So I'll be sharing the, the, the struggles and situations of those people in that country. And this close country... It's so difficult to, to spread the gospel. You could not do like a, even a regular church. Even their church are monitored by the government. The sermons, the sermons, you have to pass the sermon every week to the government. They have to check it. And, and it's only approved sermon by the government that will be spoken in the church. So a lot of churches are underground. If you want really a, a genuine Seventh-day Adventist fellowship, so it was, it is underground. Okay, by the way, Lavelle, you could take out, you could take out the, the slides now. Thank you so much. So it's, uh, it's basically underground churches. And they don't have, since, since the sermons, <laughs> since the sermon, friends, is not, uh, what do you call this? It's, it's not, uh, uh, it's not being, it's not free to, uh, you could not, you don't have freedom of speech. So can you imagine? There's no evangelistic crusades. There's no evangelistic series, friends. There's no open revival. So all they could do is distribute DVDs illegally. Yes, friends. And when they are caught, they're sent to prison. When they are caught, uh, properties will be confiscated. So families have been separated from, from families. So they came to a point of really just like exhausting all their ideas and even their resources. And they're thinking, what should we do? And there was one of their members said, why not let's fast and let's pray for the Holy Spirit's intervention in our work right now. Do you know what they did? For the whole month, they scheduled their fasting and prayer. So in, the, in every week, they choose like interval days. They need to do fasting and prayer. So three times a week, they do fasting and prayer for the whole month. Friends, after that month of fasting and prayer, they went out <clears throat> back again to their usual thing, distribute DVDs. But this time, friends, those DVDs were accompanied by the power of the Holy Spirit. And one of those DVDs fell into the hands of a mafia general. Yes, friends, you heard it right. It was a mafia general. When he got a hold of this DVD, friends, he could not, he could not stay still. The power of the Holy Spirit convicted him. And since he's the mafia general, he tracked down, <laughs> he tracked down the person who was speaking in that DVD. So he found the house of that pastor. He knocked, and when the door was was opened, it was the Bible worker who welcomed him. And he asked for, for the pastor. He wants to see the pastor. And the Bible worker said, I'm sorry he's not here right now. He's in the U.S. And the mafia leader said, but I want to talk to him. I want to know more about him. And this Bible worker said, but do you want to know Jesus instead? Since the pastor is not here. He said, okay, I want to know about the Jesus that he was talking about. So they sat down. They had a Bible study. He could not get enough of it. 
The next day he came back. The next day he came back. <laughs> Friends, until they finished everything, he gave his heart to Jesus. Isn't it crazy? He gave his heart to Jesus. But this is the thing. Friends, this is the thing. He was not, he was not satisfied of what he has committed. So he shared this with his fellow mafia people. Remember, he's the boss. So he shared it to the people below him. Friends, 20 plus mafia people joined the church together with their families. Friends, isn't this crazy? Isn't this inspiring and terrifying at the same time? If you have mafia people in your church, <laughs> just imagine if you have a church board and they are church board officers, if they raise their hand and suggest something, you would not want to cross them. <laughs> But isn't this amazing, friends? Isn't this amazing to see what God can do if we let Him take over? Can you say amen? Amen, friends? If you want to say the loudest amen, just push your thumb above your screen. <laughs> yes. Amen. So, friends, this is just a picture of what God can do. Isn't this mind-blowing? Friends, how many mind-blowing experiences we've had in our church? Not much, isn't it? You know why? Because we have not been depending on the Lord the way we should be depending on Him. We have to be dependent so much on the one who promised us power. And if we would not take Him seriously, my dear friends, we will not experience this powerful experience that happened in that closed country. Friends, the story is not over yet. <laughs> Forgive me for the excitement, but how can you not be excited about this powerful testimony? But I, I will ask no apology for my excitement, friends. This, this mafia general was not satisfied of what he has shared with his mafia friends. So he rented this, this facility in the city, a big, a big uh, was this conference hall or, or auditorium, he invited the whole city. He shared his testimony. 200 plus people somehow asked for baptism and gave their hearts to the Lord. Isn't this crazy? 200 plus people. And, and he changed his business, all his illegal business, his drug business, his gambling business, all those crazy business, he changed it. He set up, friends, he set up, he set up uh, vegetable stands all over town he became vegan friends <laughs> he said of vegetables and this is one thing that happens friends when the heart is changed the lifestyle is changed can you say amen friends don't attack the lifestyle first attack the heart and you are not the one attacking the heart it's the holy spirit work to attack the heart amen let's give them all a heart attack by lifting them all to the lord amen that's that's new there Let's give them all a heart attack, an attack from the Holy Spirit. So friends, this is what happened. In, in, those, in, every, in every vegetable stands, they distribute DVDs in every vegetable stands. And, and the police, the authorities, friends, the authorities, <laughs> they do not do anything against those DVDs, against those distributions because they know is the mafia general's business. And in every plaza now that they have these vegetables and they have this PA system, these this loudspeakers. And you know what the loudspeaker is, is blasting about? It's the sermon that is found in that DVD. And the authorities are not doing anything against it because it's the mafia general's business. <laughs> Isn't that crazy, friends? This is what happens when we take God at His word. This is what happens when God's people depend fully upon Him. And friends, this is what's going to happen in your church when you take God at His word. You see, friends, we don't need extra resources. We don't need ideas. We don't need new methods. We need a new attitude towards this beautiful gift that, has, that God has given us. We need a new hunger, a new desperation, my dear friends, to call on of the power that God 
has left for us. Friends, remember the story of Gideon? <laughs> Gideon and his 300. You know how many Midianites? Just imagine, friends, this is, this is a crazy situation here. This is a crazy situation. Gideon against the Midianites. The Midianites is like a numbered host. They're like the sand on the seashore in number. And, and for God to reduce the number of, of the Israelites from 32,000 down to 10,000, down to 300, that is crazy, isn't it? You know what's the reason why the Lord has to reduce that? If you have your Bibles with you, please open it with me in Judges 7 verse 2. Judges 7 verse 2. If you're there, say amen. I will never say, I'll never hear you say amen because you're muted. So I'll just go on, friends. It says here, the people who are with you are too many for me to give, to give the Midianites into their hands lest Israel claim glory for itself against me, saying, my own hand had saved me. Did you hear that, friends? The Lord did not, the, the Lord somehow reduced them into 300, into almost impossibility, so that they will not take the glory from God. They will not suspect that it was because of their number that they have won the victory. My dear friends, this is one thing. When God is with you, even one is already a majority. Amen? When God is with you, victory, my dear friends, is assured. And God wants to make it so clear that it's not because of the numbers. It's not because of the resources. It's not because of the idea that won the battle. It's Him who won the battle. Sometimes, friends, we have to be reduced to almost nothing. And when the Lord does that, do not complain. Do not cry out. Set yourselves. Stand ye still. Because God will do the winning for you. And friends, this is one amazing God that we serve, friends. This is one amazing God that we serve. And just imagine, you know what's, what's the percentage? What's the percentage of, <laughs> of 300 over 32,000? It's even less than 1%. It's 0.973 something. And I ask people, should we round it off to, to 1%? No, no. <laughs> this is one thing I realized. God has to reduce them to almost nothing. God has to reduce them to almost nothing so that when the victory is experienced, they'll know for a fact that they have won that victory only because of God. Can you say amen to that, friends? Can you say amen to that? So listen to this next thought here. I don't know about, about you. If you know about this uh, pastor named Pastor Dennis Smith, he wrote a lot of, of beautiful like 40 days of prayer books. It's being used all over the world in the GC. It's being used. So Pastor Dennis Smith wrote in his book, listen to this, as a Christian pastor, a very, this is a very, very humble acknowledgement from a pastor. He says, from a Christian pastor, as a Christian pastor, I have to admit that one easily becomes so involved in the work of God that one begins doing his own planning and doing, giving little consideration as to whether the planning and doing are under the promptings and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Wow. I am afraid that much of our activity in the church is the result of man's plans and efforts, not those of the Holy Spirit. Friends, is, it, is this right? Yes, friends. And I believe, I believe if it's the work of the Holy Spirit, my dear friends, that green will not stay on that part of the graph. Listen, friends, this is what we need right now. The promise is made, this is from Central Advance, from the Spirit of Prophecy. The promise is made on the condition that the united prayers of God's people are offered. And in answer to these prayers, there may be expected a power greater than which comes in answer to private prayer. You see, if God's people unite 
and humble ourselves together. Remember 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall what? Shall humble themselves and pray. Friends, if we will just come to the Lord and, and somehow take Him at His word and obey Him, great things are going to happen in our church. And listen, friends, it says here, the power given will be proportionate. Take note. The power given will be proportionate to the unity of the members and their love for God and their love for one another. Can you say amen to that, friends? The power given will be proportionate to the unity of the members. And I believe it's also the humility of the members because there's no unity when there's no humility, friends. The power given will be proportionate to the unity or the humility of the members and their love for God and their love for one another. Friends, the question tonight is, how much power do we need? A lot. Seeing that graph, there's a lot of power that we need. And friends, this is one thing. This is one thing, friends, that I'd like to share with you. The Lord desires to give you that power. Can you say amen? Remember what we shared a while ago? It is to be given liberally to the people of God. Isn't that mind-blowing? The resources are liberal. The resources are so powerful. So if we have not had that accomplishments, it's not because that God is lacking. It's because our thirst, our desperation to call upon Him is lacking. Let me continue on. It says here, the tenor of the Bible, this is from Patriarchs and Prophets, the tenor of the Bible, although I thought that tenor is, is the voice in the choir. No, not, not that tenor. Is the subject, the flow of the Bible. It says here, the tenor of the Bible is to inculcate distrust of human power and to encourage trust in divine power. Did you see that, friends? That is the theme of the Bible wherever you look. Is to encourage what? Trust in divine power. Is to inculcate distrust in human power, but to encourage trust in divine power. Friends, as I have been leading out prayer sessions for the past like nine years and 10 months, almost 10 years now, I could find the highest joy seeing God's people come together and pray. I've been leading out in GYC, ASI, and this is one thing, friends, that I realize. This is one important thing that I realize that if, if the ministry, if a group of people really treasures or values prayer so much, there's a lot of power that is being given. I remember when, when GYC asked me, Brother Jem, we want to see God's power being poured out in GYC. Because, friend, just imagine, how do you, how do you maintain the spirituality of, of the group of like 5,000 plus attendees in a conference? It's crazy. It is crazy. You could not, you could not really maintain the spirituality of, of the whole event with that number of people coming in from all over the world. So they, this group of, of leaders, our GYC leaders, I, I really praise God for GYC. Don't you? GYC, GYC Europe, GYC International. It has, it has been a blessing. So this group of leaders really came together and, and they're desperately calling on the name of God on, on what to do, on, on how to bring revival back again in these big meetings. So you know what? Their, their intentionality is, is, is just like warming my heart. They want, they want emphasis on prayer to be so, so solid, to be right on. They gave me 10 minutes to promote every plenary. Just imagine, friends, 3 ABN time, 10 minutes is so precious. Did you get that? In order to be on a stage to promote 10 minutes, that's crazy. Testimonies are only given three minutes or two minutes. When you see those speakers, when they promote, when they promote their workshops, you know how many minutes are given to them? Not even a minute. It's only 30 seconds. That's how much are given them. And for them to put an emphasis on prayer for 10 minutes, 
it just goes to show how serious they are. Friends, you know how many came to the prayer room? Our first day, I remember, we had a big prayer and I'm thinking, Lord, how am I going to fail this? And the Lord convicted me, Jen, you're not the Holy Spirit. You are not the one who will fill that, that room. So I said, Lord, I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> and friends, you know what? Our first morning, there were like nearly 300 plus. That was in Houston. At 6 a.m., friends, you know, in the U.S., 6 a.m. is like equivalent of 4 a.m. in Asia. So no one wants to get out of their beds. Friends, the next day, it was like 400 plus. On Sabbath, there were like 500 plus. People could not, could not get in. The next year in Phoenix, Arizona, on Sabbath, friends, on Sabbath, there were more than 1,100 people who were there. Just imagine being on your knees at 6 in the morning with a thousand group of people coming together, lifting up their, their voices to God. Friends, that's like, whew, I'm, I'm having goosebumps right now imagining that because it could not be erased from your memory. It could not be erased from your memory. It's like Christ is coming at that moment. And people were saying, wow, Jem, this is, this is how heaven feels like. This is what heaven looks like. And I said, yes, we are having a glimpse of heaven here. And year after year, friends, this, is, this has been four years that I've been leading out. Year after year, I could see the growth of, of the number of people going to the prayer room. Just imagine at 5.30 in the morning, young people will be running. <laughs> they don't want to be late in the prayer room. And, and friends, we don't have praise team. We don't have... We don't even have instruments. We don't have even a guitar, a simple guitar. We don't have a guitar when we sing. And we don't sing other songs rather than the hymnal songs, the boring hymnal songs, and some choruses. But my dear friends, you know what? You don't need a lot of embellishments. When the Holy Spirit is there, the music is just mind-blowing. And that's the reason why the young people that don't want, they don't want to miss out on the song service before we start at six. But they don't want, but they don't want that the song service will be shortened. So in this past years, we started at 5.45. 5.45. So that's why at 5.30, they are already running towards the prayer room. Friends, just imagine when six o'clock came, when you arrive in the prayer room at six o'clock, it's, it looks like you're like, it looks like you're late for church. The room is already filled up. And every year, every year, my dear friends, we need a bigger room. We need a bigger room than this. And, and, just, and just the concluded GYC last year, you know, they are so afraid that, uh, that, that we might be closed by the fire marshal because there's no room that's available for us. So, they blocked the whole way. <laughs> yes, friends, the whole way. The whole way. The other side of the convention, there's a hallway there. It's huge hallway. They blocked it. They, they put like uh, artificial doors and they, they named it prayer room. And friends, even that huge room, they have to extend the walls because people are overflowing during Sabbath. And this is one thing I realized, friends. The moment we seek God first, he pours his spirit. And the officers have been telling me, Jem, we have seen a huge difference, a powerful difference when we focus on prayer. Friends, this is one thing that God wants to do in every church. God wants to do in every conference. He wants to be seen. He wants to be lifted up. Because that's the only way to draw all men unto him. And the only way to lift him up is when we bow low. Can you say amen to that? When we bow low, friends, that when he is, that's when he is lifted up. Friends, we need the influence of the Holy Spirit. Without him, we don't have power. Would you agree with that? Can you say amen to that statement, friends? Can you say amen? Okay, even those whom I cannot see because your videos are off, I believe that you're saying amen in the silence of your room. And listen to this, friends. The preaching of the word 
will be of no avail without the continual presence and aid of the Holy Spirit. Did you hear that, friends? The conference, the meetings, it's not dependent on powerful preachers. Can you say amen? <laughs> it's not dependent on powerful preachers. It's dependent on the power from on high. Listen, friends. Only when the truth is accompanied to the heart by the Spirit will it quicken the conscience and transform the life. No amount of education, no advantages, however great, can make one channel of light without the cooperation of the Spirit of God. Isn't that powerful, friends? Without the Spirit of God, nothing, nothing will happen. Listen, friends. Oh, this is one powerful statement. Testimonies to the Church, Volume 8. It is the absence of the Spirit that makes the gospel ministry so powerless. Learning, talent, eloquence, every natural or acquired endowment may be possessed, but without the presence of the Spirit of God, no heart will be touched. No sinner want to Christ. Wow, can you say wow to that, friends? Even though you have, you have the best, Adventist speakers in your conference, when you are not asking for the power of the Holy Spirit, friends, no heart will be touched. No sinner will be won to Christ. Listen to the next line. Interesting. On the other hand, if they are connected with Christ, if the gifts of the Spirit are theirs, the poorest, the most ignorant of his disciples will have a power that will tell upon hearts. Can you say amen to this, friends? I could really relate to this. The poorest, the most ignorant will have a power that will tell upon hearts. God makes them channels for the outflowing of the highest influence in the universe. <sighs> Friends, this is crazy. God will make them as a channels of light in the highest influence of the universe. This is crazy, my dear friends. You see, friends, this is one thing that I have to emphasize here. It's not your education. It's not your, it's not your influence. It's not your resources that's going to finish the job. It's the power that has been promised to you. It is to be given liberally to the people of God. Friends, you know why the reason, what's the reason why we have blue in those graphs rather than green? Listen, the Lord has shown me that men in responsible positions, this is not just talking about the leaders, it's talking about you and me as well, that men in responsible positions are standing directly in the way of His work. Wow. We have been standing directly in the way of His Word. Friends, listen to this. If you are not following God's instruction, you are standing in His way. If you're thinking that you're helping, and you're thinking that you're helping the Lord's work without following His beatings, you're actually a hindrance. And friends, sometimes we rejoice. Wow, we have baptized a hundred Friends, there could have been millions there if you have followed the Lord's instruction. If you ask for His power. Would you believe so? I have, I have a backup for that statement, friends. Later, I will read it. Oh, yeah. I have a few more minutes before I close. Listen, friends, listen. When all shall take their appointed position in God's work. Remember, we are standing in God's, in God's way. Listen to this. When all shall take their appointed place in God's work. Where is this appointed place, friends? Earnestly seeking wisdom and guidance from Him. Where is this appointed work? To earnestly seek for, seek for wisdom and guidance from Him. That's on your knees, friends. That's on your knees. <laughs> then, listen to the next line a great advance will have been made toward letting the light shine upon the world. When man shall, plea, shall cease, let me read it again. 
when men shall cease to place themselves in the way, God will work among us as never before. Wow. <laughs> when you stop, when we stop placing ourselves in the way of God, God will work among us, among us, the way he has never worked before. My dear friends, let's all be in the proper position that we should be in. We should humble ourselves before God and seek for his leading, seek for his guidance. Most of the time, we just ask for his blessings. We just ask for miracles. We just ask for his anointing. But we do not seek for his leading. We don't seek for his guidance. We do not seek for him taking over everything. That's what we have to be asking for. By the way, friends, that's from Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 726. Listen to this thought, friends. Few more quotes before I close. Testimony Treasure, Volume 2, page 188. There is a necessity for the Lord to communicate his own ideas to the soul. Did you get that? <laughs> There is a necessity for the Lord to communicate His own ideas to the soul. Another mind-blowing thought, friends, that God has an idea in every situation that you face that He wants to communicate with you. Did you get this? <laughs> it says here, what a thought that instead of our poor, earthly contracted ideas and plans, God will communicate to us His own ideas. Take note, friends, His own ideas, His own thought, noble, broad, far-reaching, always leading heavenwards. Friends, no matter how brilliant our ideas put together, it's nothing in comparison to His own ideas. Can you say amen? Friends, we have been stuck here in this world because of our own ideas. You see that graph that we, that we saw a while ago? That blue is the result of your idea, of my idea. Because if God's ideas, friends, would have been, it would have been all green. It would have been all green. Lastly, friends, promise this is the last. <laughs> I'd like to read this last thought. Listen to this thought, friends. It's really mind-blowing. This is from Signs of the Times, January 1, 1894, paragraph 4. It says here, In giving Jesus to the world, God gave all of heaven in one gift. I think you knew, you knew this statement already. huh? In giving Jesus to the world, God gave all of heaven in one gift. Then the question is, Listen to this. Then why is it when God has left nothing undone that could be done that there are not more brought from darkness to light? Does that make sense? If God has given Jesus everything in one gift, why is it that there's not much more people that were brought from darkness to light? That there are, why are there more blue in that graph than green? Huh? Listen to the answer. It is because human will does not cooperate with divine intelligences. Wow. It's a refusal to cooperate with God that there's not much people want to Christ. Listen to this thought. <sighs> Brace yourselves. Deep breathing. Yes, Diana, drink some water. <sighs> okay. Listen to this thought, friends. If the Lord's will and way were carried out, humanity would be reached through humanity. And every lost prodigal would be brought home. Did you hear that? Every lost prodigal would be brought home. Friends, that graph was not originally designed to be blue. It should be all green because the Lord desires for every sinner to be brought home. Just imagine, friends, how many of them went to the grave without hearing about Jesus? 
And whose fault that is? That's my fault. That's our fault. Because we have not been cooperating with the one who desires to finish this work. Not by might nor by power, but only by his spirit. Take that to heart, my dear brothers and sisters. It's not by your might. It's not by your power. It's not by your influence. It's only by the power of the Holy Spirit. So I hope and I pray that this workshop will bring you to the point of your desperate need of Him. Will bring you to the realization, my dear friends, that without Him, literally we are nothing. Let that graph remind you of the vast field that we have to work on. But remember, nothing is impossible with God. If we will just but obey, if we will just but humble ourselves, then we will see the results that He wants to fulfill, that He wants to accomplish through you and through me. Let's bow our heads, friends, for a word of prayer. Our great God, our dear loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we praise you and we thank you for your, oh, for your desperate desire to bring every prodigal home. Lord, this somehow gives us a realization that we have been the reason why this prodigal, some of the prodigals have not made it home. Lord, please do forgive. Forgive us, dear Father, of our pride. Forgive us, O Lord, of our self-sufficiency. Forgive us, O Lord, for thinking that we can do this without your help, without following entirely your guidance. Lord, I ask that you please take away any self-confidence that we have, that our confidence will only be found in you. Take away, dear Father, our self-reliance, that we will be absolutely reliant only upon your word, only upon your leading and your instruction. Dear Father, I ask that in the times that we meet together, may we spend more time on our knees than giving our ideas. Lord, please help us to get the ideas that you desire. Because you have said, Lord, it is so important for you. It is necessary for you that you will communicate your own ideas to us. Oh Lord, we desire that. And Lord, please help us. Help us, oh Lord, to humble ourselves before you. That we may lay everything at your feet that we will admit oh lord that we are not the ones in charge but you are so lord i pray that you please anoint my brothers and my sisters who are here joining me in this workshop right now may we bring this back to our organizations may we bring this back to our church to our families and to our own individual lives that we may fully depend upon you that jesus and jesus alone will be seen will be heard accomplish the work you have set before us. Lord, thank you so much. Your power, you have promised that it will be given liberally to your people. So Lord, please help us claim that. Thank you, Lord, because we know that you are so faithful to what you have promised and what you said you will fulfill. We give you back, Lord, all the praises and glory and the honor. We just ask, please anoint us with the anointing of your Holy Spirit. We pray this in the loving name of your son, Jesus. All your children say, amen. Oh, amen, friends. So before we go, I heard that there's a few minutes for a question and answer. So if you have some questions, feel free to, uh, to just open it up. I don't promise that I have all the answers. But God has all the answers. Amen? <laughs> so if there's any question, just uh, unmute yourselves and, uh, and ask away. Oops. Sorry, sorry. Oh, no, no, no.
Hello? Can you hear me? Oh, praise God. <laughs> okay. We are back. <laughs> I'm sorry you lost me there for a while. I don't know what I clicked. I'm technologically challenged. <laughs> okay, so, so is there any question? Let me check the chat if there are any questions. Okay, there's none. No more question? Or if there's no question, any reaction? Any violent reaction from uh, <laughs> any reaction from what we just shared? This is a very, very special, a very, uh, what's this? Uh, very well behaved class right now. No noise. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Esther, we know it is very important and true. You said, how can we begin to develop what you said? Okay. I guess it's, uh, how can we begin to develop? what we have just shared a while ago is really put it into practice, really put it into practice. Just the realization that we have, that we have seen a while ago, that, that graph alone will show us that we have a lot of things that we need to do. And that realization, my dear friends, that without God, you could do nothing, that all our efforts would mean nothing without him, that will bring us to the emergency of being on our knees. So gather friends, share this burden to other people. Remember where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So and especially for those of you who are leading out, those of you who are leading out organizations like, like your AY, like your church, like GYC, pray that the leadership Will somehow be convinced that without God we are nothing. This is what happened in GYC. When all of them showed up for the morning prayer session, you know what happened? <laughs> the power was really poured out. Like every appeal, they could sense, wow, this is really different. And, and even the board of directors were coming to me and saying, Jem, we have, we have experienced something that we have not experienced before or we have not experienced for a very long time. The response of people coming in, responding to the appeal is, is unparalleled. So friends, this is what happens when, when we take God seriously. So for us leaders, we will not really be leading out if we will not, if we will not be on our knees. Our human efforts are just feeble. We'll accomplish nothing. That will continue the green the green placement there, it will continue to be like that if we will not let God take over. So let God take over with the leadership. And this is not just happening in GYC. I have been to a lot of youth conferences. And when you put God first, God shows up. Same is true in your life. Develop a prayer, a prayer habit. Develop a prayer life, friends. And that will transcend in everything that we do. So I hope, Esther, that I answered your question. Okay, here's another one from Diana. I wrote earlier the quote from uh, AFM's website, no one has the right to hear the gospel twice, yes. While there remains someone who has not heard it once, maybe you should start by sharing with those around us that haven't heard anything you know. Yes, that's, that's really good. It's really powerful. And this is one thing as well that I, share, I, like to, I like to share. You will not be able to share Jesus if you don't have Jesus. We'll only be able to share what we have. So let us be filled by his spirit. And this is one thing. His, his promise. His promise is that he will give it to us liberally. So what are we waiting for? We have tried a lot of ideas. We have tried a lot of methods. This time, 
let's try to follow him. <laughs> let's try to follow his bidding and see where he's leading us. Okay, let me check the next. Uh, okay. From Karen, initially I wanted to ask, is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit dependent upon our asking? Isn't God going to do it anyway? But when you answered me, when you thought that it, that this is the attitude God wants us, wants to correct, we are stuck down here because of our methods. Yes, friends, this is, this is one thing that God wants us to ask. We will not have it until we ask. Luke 11 verse 13 says, uh, what's that beautiful verse? The Lord, the Lord says to us that, uh, uh, let me, let me go to that uh, beautiful, beautiful verse. Luke 11 verse 13. Oh, if ye then being evil knows how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit to them that what? That ask. So friends, God would love to give it to us. But we have to ask. And remember friends, God is a gentle God. He will not push his way. So we have, we have to ask. And I love this beautiful quote that I gave last time. These are pages, page 300, paragraph 1. From the soul that feels his need, nothing is withheld. <laughs> I love that quote that you said, we have not because we ask not. So it should be asked. Because look at this, friends. If we will not ask, when the victory is given, we will not acknowledge that it came from God. We might think that it came from us. You get this. The acknowledging part is very important. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Do not forget the, the next one. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. Because if we don't acknowledge, when we take the credit, friends, <laughs> when we take the credit, we're going downhill. It should be going back again to Him. Okay. This is a very shy group, huh? I, did, I have not heard one voice. It's all written here. Okay, it's okay. It says here, how is your experience in praying for others? Is it best to pray for one person for a long time or so many every day? That's a very good question. Yes, I have my time of intercession as well. And, and even intercession, friends, it's not even our our idea. It's not even our choice when to pray and how to pray. It is still God's leading. It is still God's leading. That's why, and this is one amazing thing about our God. He wants to be so one with, with your thoughts, with your hearts, with your minds. And, and sometimes even when I'm, when I'm, what's this, when I'm reading, the Lord would just bring a person to my mind. And that would be a very strong conviction, a strong impression that I have to stop even my, my Bible study sometimes and be on my knees and intercede for that person. And, and the Lord will somehow tell you when to stop. He wants that line to be open with us. And I will call that person, I'll message that person in, in a few hours. And I ask, hey, are you okay? And I said, I'm okay now, but I was not a while ago. And I said, oh, that's why the Lord has convicted me to pray for you. And friends, it's so amazing how the Lord works. And you could not even credit that to yourself. You know for a fact that if the Lord did not convict you to intercede for that person, you would not even <laughs> know who to pray for. And this is another thing as well that, I, that really blew my mind. Because if you type the word indict, I-N-D-I-T-E -E. in the Spirit of Prophecy uh, was this uh, app. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, of uh, what's this of connection with it in prayer. You know what indict means? 
English is not my first language, so I have to go back to the dictionary. Indict means compose. It says there, in one of the, in one of the codes, it says, it is the will of God that the Holy Spirit will indict our prayers. Did you get this? That the Holy Spirit will compose our prayers. So even the prayers that we'll be praying will not just be from our hearts, but the prayers that will be composed by the Holy Spirit through us. Isn't that powerful, friends? So even in the prayer, I've been in the prayer ministry for like nearly 10 years. One thing that I begin to realize, I'm beginning to, to grow on it, that I don't know anything except what he reveals, except what he teaches. And that's one amazing thought, my dear friends, that the Lord, the Lord just wants us to be so entirely dependent on him. And and friends, this is one thing as well that, that, have, that have bothered me before because we don't want to be so dependent on someone else. Do you agree? Uh, you don't want needy people in your life. Needy people are a turn off. But this is one thing. The Lord wants you to be needy of Him. The Lord wants you to be so dependent on Him that you will not have confidence in you only in Him. When that happens, friends, you will be immovable. How can you be moved when your confidence is in God? How can you be afraid when the enemy scares you, when you depend fully on God? Nothing scares you, friends. Nothing will ever, was this, break you when your dependence is fully on the Lord. So, yes. <laughs> I hope I answered your question. I hope I'm not just like blubbering here. So any more questions? Okay. Praise God, Alexia. Thank God. No more questions? Okay. I think it's time to dismiss if there's no more questions. But uh, I'll just wait. Maybe someone is still typing. Five, four. There's a countdown, huh? <laughs> Three. <laughs> and friends, it has been it has been a pleasure. It has been a pleasure sharing this workshop with you. I hope and I pray that you take this to heart and see. I, I'll tell you, friends, you will not regret. Oh, there's a question, Amina. You will not regret, you will not regret putting God first in your life. Oh, I love that question. I, uh, let, let me read that question. How can we pray for you? Oh, thank you. You are so sweet. This group is so sweet. I'm really touched here. <laughs> pray that my confidence will only be found in God that my dependence on him will never, ever fade away. Yes, yeah, so, so please keep that, keep that in prayer. Keep that in prayer. And this is one thing that I, I, I've been telling you a lot of one thing, one thing, but there's a lot of things that I've been telling you. Huh? This, is, this is one important thing that uh, it somehow stuck to my, to my head because all the while I thought that Prayer is just like getting what you want from God. But you know what? It's, it's really getting to know His will for you. And when you get to know that His will is way better than what you desire for yourself, my dear friends, you begin to, you begin to be submissive to whatever He desires for you. So when, I ask, when people ask me, so Jen, what can I pray for you personally? There was one time that I was even shocked. I don't know what, how to answer. And I just said, oh. You know what? All, all the things that I've been asking God before, God's answer was not in accordance to what I asked, but what God answered to me was way, way better than what I asked Him for. So right now, I just pray that just Lord prepare my heart for every surprise that you're about to give me. <laughs> okay, so there is this question. Oh, oftentimes we forget how many battles are also on, 
on the heart of the speakers and the ones who are earnest who earnestly share the word of god yes friends please continue to pray for the speakers and continue to pray that that the speakers will not look at self because it is so easy to receive the glory that should belong to god and and rather than appreciate your speaker or praise your speaker praise the lord every time you praise the speaker tell him praise god that he used you okay <laughs> praise god that he used a donkey like you no no don't say that don't say that friends <laughs> just say that to me okay <laughs> and one more one more was this one more top what are the steps of getting to know god's will for your life it all starts with surrendering it all starts with with submitting to him and uh, and that's the funny thing is we desire to know his will but the question is when you get to know his will you have the desire to obey it so that is that is the the disconnect there so it all starts with a surrendered heart and and even the surrender friends we could not do it on our own we just ask the lord to give us a courage to lay it all and the more you get to know him this is one thing the more you get to know him the more your heart will be willing to surrender because the more you get to know him the more you'll trust him the more you fall in love with him yes friends and when you fall in love with someone oh surrender you give up what you want you begin to want what the person wants and how much more with jesus the more you get to know him friends it will blow your mind so that's the first part and the rest it will follow yeah have that walk with him when you know him you know his will okay true yes <laughs> Any more questions? Last one minute. <laughs> this is a very productive short amount of time. Okay. Thank you for sharing Jesus so passionate. Oh, praise God for that. You cannot not be passionate if you know him. Yes, friends, it's so exciting. It's more than being in love with your girlfriend or your boyfriend and come to think of it i don't even have a girlfriend <laughs> but this is one thing that i like to share with you life with the lord is a very very romantic life a very romantic life you'll always smile your cheekbones will hurt from smiling <laughs> god is good <laughs> okay so since there's no more question i'd like to end this once again with a word of prayer let us pray friends let's, why not let's kneel down for the prayer he deserves that uh, our our humility before him so let's let's kneel down for the prayer our great god our dear loving heavenly father lord it is such a joy to be in your presence lord we praise and we thank you for opening our eyes helping us to see that we are nothing without you but when we have you, dear Father, we have everything. So, Lord, I pray in a very special way for my brothers and my sisters here in this call. That Lord, please continue to work in their hearts. May this talk that we have shared this, uh, this evening will be a reality for all of us. That this will not just be a theory. It will be, this will be an experience. So, Lord, I pray that may Jesus be real in our lives. Help us, Lord, to walk with you closer and closer each day. Help us, Lord, that all that we could see is Jesus. All that we desire is Jesus. All that we could talk about is Jesus. So, Lord, I pray that you please baptize all of us, dear Lord, with the baptism of your Holy Spirit. Soak us, Lord, from the tips of our hair, the soles of our feet. Make us overflow, dear Father, that when we get near others, they get wet as well. Thank you so much, Lord, because... We, you have promised that exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think is what you're about to do to us. So, Lord, I pray, prepare our hearts, Lord, to receive you. We ask this in the loving name of your son, Jesus, all your children say, amen. Amen. So, friends, thank you so much for joining. God bless you.
and and see you when the time is right when there's no more covid when there's no more social distancing when there's no more quarantine i hope to be seeing you anytime but if not that we'll be seeing on the tavendi shore god bless everyone bye bye and lavelle thank you so much for facilitating god bless you no problem at all thank you and for those of you who are here especially for joy and diana who kept me uh what's this give me company thank you so much for your presence <laughs> god bless and for those two cute babies that showed up a while ago <laughs> thank you so good night friends yes I'm i'll sleep now it's 2 30 in the morning here <laughs> Yes, but the Lord woke me up, so <laughs> praise God. God bless everyone. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>